he wants to say. He was born, or he grew up in Jamestown, North Carolina, in Guilford County. His leadership skills were evident early in his career as he was uh, president of the student body at Wrightsville High School. He is a graduate of Catawba College. Uh, he currently holds a management position with Duke Energy where he started as a meter reader and worked his way up. So I think that says a lot. His political career began in Charlotte in 1989 when he was elected to the city council. He served on the council until he was elected mayor in 1995. Last year he was elected for a seventh term. He is the longest serving mayor in Charlotte history. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the next governor of the state of North Carolina, Pat McCoy. forget my first day of school in Jamestown, North Carolina, you see a, a little kept secret now in politics is I was actually born in Columbus, Ohio. My dad was an engineer, my mom was a nurse, and they moved the family to the, the triad area because my dad got a new engineering job, and I was nine years old. And my first day at Jamestown Elementary School, Mrs. Lockman, and she asked me a question when I walked in, and, and she said, asked me a yes, no question. And I went, yeah. <laughs> See, that's how we did it in Ohio in 1966. And she said, what'd you say? I went, yeah. And she said, what'd you say? And I figured they do things different. And I went, yes. And she said, Patrick, come up here right now. In Jamestown, we always refer to our teachers as either yes ma'am or yes sir. And I never want you to say anything different for the rest of your life. In fact, you're going to be now be punished. You have to draw out of a jar of punishments. And so I drew out of the jar and I was in total shock. I was nine years old. And it was to wash my mouth out with soap. <laughs> And I've been saying yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, ever since. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. And that's the culture we need to keep in North Carolina. Now, you've been probably hearing about me on the radio and on TV for the past couple weeks from my opponent. In fact, just yesterday, I was in Raleigh yesterday, and I woke up in a strange hotel room yesterday, you know, another night in a hotel room, and I saw three negative ads about me, one after another, and after seeing the three negative ads about me, I've decided not to vote for myself. <laughs> I'll, let me tell you what's happening right now. Our opponent is going to say and do anything, including lying, I don't even call it not telling the truth anymore, it's a lie. Amen. To keep power. And that's their goal is to keep power. The, the Raleigh elite now don't care about public service, they care about power. And they're saying and doing anything this last week and a half to keep the power. I just heard that state employees got a major mailing saying Pat McCrory is gonna get rid of all their jobs and contract out services. Scare tactics, which by the way, we contract out services now in the state of North Carolina for road building. It's nothing different. But it's people trying to scare state employees and you wonder how did this power elite get all the addresses of all the state employees? It's that power they want to hold on to. You're hearing commercials right now over the radio. It's two good old boys like all of us who are going, Henry, did you hear about that Mayor Pat McCrory? He's hiring illegal immigrants for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It's a lie. 
I want to let you know that if you hear it. You know what I did for the NASCAR Hall of Fame? I made sure that in the contract we wouldn't hire illegal immigrants. And that was very important to me. Another lie that you're hearing on the radio right now is they're trying to tell you that uh, I don't give police raises to fire and police. Have you seen that one? That isn't the truth. My 13 years as mayor, every one of my budgets have included a very substantial raise for fire and police. What she's doing is, three years ago, I vetoed the entire $1.7 billion budget because my Democrats wanted to increase property taxes by 9%. I had a budget with the exact same pay raises for my fire and police without a tax increase. So I vetoed the entire budget. So what she did in a commercial, she's pulling one little thing out of a $1.7 billion budget and saying I didn't support it. You know and I know that's not telling the truth, right? So I want you to know that when you hear these commercials about me. It's a lie. And this is the culture of, I think, corruption that we have in Raleigh right now in our state government. It's a corruption in which Sadly, they're passing legislation behind closed doors, and then a month later, your chairman of the county commission finds out about unfunded mandates that he didn't even know about that then he has to pass on to the taxpayers of your county. Your chairman doesn't even know about it because the powerful five who've been controlling the state decided it on their own with no debate on the Senate or House floor, and the governor went along with it, and the lieutenant governor did nothing. And you, have to pay the money. We've got teachers in here right now that have money stolen from their pension program to balance the budget. And then the governor, lieutenant governor announced we balanced the budget. They didn't balance the budget, they stole from some other funds. They took from the highway trust fund. When Governor Martin was governor, he created a highway trust fund. You know, the word trust means something to me. I learned that in Jamestown, North Carolina. How long was it learning how to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir? The word trust means you don't take it and balance the budget and take money out of the highway dollars. That means something to me. This is a culture of arrogance that we have right now in North Carolina. And you know this power elite of five or six people? You know about it, right? There are five or six people have been running this state. You know who they are, but guess what? They don't know who you are because they never come up here and see you, do they? The only time they come up here, the only time you see the governor, lieutenant governor, is near election time or on 30-second radio ads. You know, the lieutenant governor right now, she refused to debate me in the western part of the state. We did not have one debate west of Charlotte for the people of the Western North Carolina. Doesn't that sound like the Easley administration for the past eight years? <laughs> it's as though they don't think you exist and then get along without you while collecting your taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, this culture of arrogance has got to change, and that's why I'm running for governor of North Carolina. <laughs>